So what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is a revolutionary technology that enables a new way to send payments over the internet. You can think of it as an open accounting system where thousands of computers all over the world work together to track ownership of digital tokens called Bitcoins. When you send someone Bitcoins, the transaction is broadcast to the entire network. After it's verified, it's recorded in a public ledger called the blockchain. The blockchain contains a record of every Bitcoin transaction that has occurred since the system began, and it's shared and maintained on the network, so everyone keeps the books, so to speak. Most currencies are issued by a central authority that controls the money supply. Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer -peer system, so there is no central authority. Instead, Bitcoins are issued to users who help process transactions in the network. This is known as Bitcoin mining. Bitcoin miners are specialized computers that do the work required to verify and record transactions in the blockchain. As a reward for their work, the miners earn Bitcoins, and this is how new Bitcoins are released into circulation. The system is programmed so that only 21 million Bitcoins will ever exist, and as time goes by, the mining reward decreases. The result is a predictable supply that's governed by scarcity, making Bitcoin somewhat like a digital gold. It's the first currency of the internet, and everyone is free to use it. With Bitcoin, you can send any amount of money to anyone, anywhere in the world, as easily as sending an email. Bitcoin and things like it is the equivalent of the red pill. Okay? We are entering a completely world of uncharted water Have right you now. made any investments in Bitcoin? So, I mean, I personally, I own Bitcoin in my hedge fund. I own Bitcoin in my fund. I own Bitcoin in my private account. Uh, it is a huge deal. It's a huge, huge, huge deal. Because what you're talking about right now is for the next three to five years, an unbelievably better store value. It is gold 2.0. I think this is a currency, a currency that's really going to work eventually. Well, I think it is working, um, and uh, there will be other currencies like it that may, may be even better. Um, but in the meantime, um, there's a big industry around Bitcoin, mm -hmm. and um, you know, people have made fortunes out of Bitcoin. Bitcoin, there is no Bitcoin company, there is no uh, Bitcoin building, there's even, not even a Bitcoin server anywhere that you could shut down. It is completely distributed. Um, that's what's unique about Bitcoin. It is, for the first time, a way for the two of us to exchange value online without a third party intermediary. Until the invention of Bitcoin, for you and me to exchange money online, we had to employ a third party, like PayPal, like Visa, like MasterCard, right? Now we live in the 21st century. If we wanna have a video call to China, we can do that for free. But to send a couple hundred bucks, which is essentially just ones and zeros being moved around, costs 5% plus takes over a day. Some people have said, hey, Bitcoin is the answer to those problems. Are you a believer? Well, Bitcoin is exciting because it shows how cheap it can be. Uh, Bitcoin is, is better than currency in that uh, you don't have to ha be physically in the same place. And, of course, for large transactions, currency can, can get pretty inconvenient. You'll see Bitcoin trading at 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000. Rick Falkvina does an excellent analysis. He predicts that Bitcoin will capture between 1% and 10% of the global Forex market, which implies a price of between $100,000 to $1 million per Bitcoin. Most of the people who are on the sidelines not buying Bitcoin today will start to buy Bitcoin when it gets over 1,000. And then a greater percentage of people will definitely plow into Bitcoin when it starts to get over 10000 It's still predicting Bitcoin, $10,000 per Bitcoin in three years. Is Bitcoin the currency of the future, or is it the payment system they're developing? Bingo, it's the payment system. It's the blockchain encryption, and they're, they're interesting things. I think Bitcoin, or the really blockchain encryption that's behind it, has a greater ability to bring more of the world's population out of poverty than anything we've seen. Bitcoin has suddenly become an important topic at conferences on financial innovation all over the world. Proponents speak passionately of a digital miracle that can save the world from financial ruin. The Bitcoin story starts off like a gospel revelation. It's November the 2nd, 2008, just six weeks after the Lehman Brothers collapse, and all over the world, there are panicked debates about how to save the banks. 
Then, on a little visited web forum for cryptographers, a document appears in which a completely new monetary system is proposed. The visionary author calls himself Satoshi Nakamoto. First time I heard about it, I was at lunch with a buddy in Texas, and uh, he said, man, there's this crazy new money. And so we talked about it over lunch, and then I went home and I said, man, I wanna, I wanna see if I can buy some. At first, I wanted to buy some. I emailed a friend of mine. I think I, I probably saw the white paper in some web forum or something. You know, it just said, this is some electronic currency thing. And this was publicly available. You know, this was posted, uh, I think, in December, you know, 2008 or something. And these were the darkest days of the financial crisis. So that, to me, suggests a very clever mind uh, that saw an opportunity, the perfect opportunity, to introduce a new radical technology and a new radical approach to money and finance at just the right moment when people would be very open to making this big shift. Funds received. This community is switching to what they think is a better monetary system. A system in which banks are no longer needed because payments could be made directly from one person to another. In the system of debt, one of the two parties is always the slave. And that is the architecture of money we live in. That is the architecture of money we use in our civilization. An architecture of money where you have no control. An architecture of money where every interaction is mediated by a third party. A third party that has absolute control over that money. Bitcoin is fundamentally different because in Bitcoin, you don't owe anyone anything and no one owes you anything. It is not a system based on debt. It is a system based on ownership. And no one can censor it, no one can seize it, no one can freeze it. And what they will tell you is that they're worried. They're very worried. They're worried that criminals will use Bitcoin. But the truth is, that they're far more terrified than all of the rest of us will. Thank you. A Bitcoin is the reward for solving complex mathematical puzzles, and Bitcoin miners let their computers work day and night to complete these tasks. All the Bitcoin users in the world are connected, and together they constitute a network that processes and checks all Bitcoin transactions in a public ledger called the blockchain, and Satoshi Nakamoto designed it in such a way that users can create a free and anonymous Bitcoin account number, a so-called wallet. Satoshi's invention eliminates the need for a central bank, because all the users together are the bank. But early Bitcoin users had no idea how big Bitcoin and the blockchain would become. I think sometime in spring of 2010, I could be wrong on the exact dates, but basically uh, someone put out a, a request saying, hey, I'd like to buy something with Bitcoin. Will anyone uh, buy me a pizza? And I believe someone here in England uh, bought the, the person in Florida a pizza uh, for 10,000 or something Bitcoins. I mean, it'd be worth you know, a very large sum of money today. Uh, and, and that was the first Bitcoin commercial transaction. Garrick Heilman, an economist at the London School of Economics, was one of the first scholars to study Bitcoin and the blockchain as a serious monetary system. Um, as a scholar, did you sort of label it or was it something totally new to you? It looked very different to me. I mean, as soon as I heard the word decentralized and the fact there was a network powering this currency rather than a central issuer, that immediately captured my interest as something quite different based on what little I knew about alternative currencies at that time. What it meant for people who are libertarians in particular is that the government couldn't come in and shut down a server and end Bitcoin. It would have to shut down the entire internet or turn off the electricity grid to, to stop Bitcoin. And so that was really attractive to, to people who are worried about these types of things. So what was supposed to be a very democratic system has ended up concentrating in exactly the same way that we have seen the banks concentrate their business. So now you have most of the miners are based in China or most of the miners are um, huge server farms that, you know, the average person can't be a miner anymore in Bitcoin. It's far, you know, the, the, the barriers to entry are now really, really quite expensive. They're, you have to invest in at least, you know, you have 
thousands of dollars of, of equipment if you want to be a miner. Lots of paper money. So this is a receipt and this is my public address and private key. You got it covered for us so we cannot film it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Over the past two years, new members are increasingly joining the Bitcoin community, not for ideological reasons, but for practical ones. In Kiev, there are some protests happening. So people started using social media to share their QR code. Within a matter of days, they automatically had $15,000 in their wallets uh, from sympathizers to the protests. That money was transferred from around the world. It's an incredibly powerful example because today I spent seven years in, in Nicaragua and today I still cannot use PayPal to transfer money to my friends in Nicaragua. Now, if you think about it, timestamp recordings of deaths, births, uh, property, transactions, votes, this is the entire fabric of our civilization, which makes the blockchain one of the most profound human innovations of our time because having a massive global ledger as a public utility can completely reorganize the way that we run our societies. <laughs>